this video, we're going to talk about economic inequality and how we can use Excel to understand how economists measure economic inequality using the Gini index. So there's been a big emphasis in the last few years on economic inequality, and you have, you'll have your own opinion on it. But I think it was really popularized by a book called Capital by a French economist named Thomas Piketty. And it's become a big issue in political campaigns around the world. So there is a measure of economic inequality economists often use called the Gini index. And basically, how does this work? You take the income of everybody, you order it from smallest to largest. And then if there's n people, you take n plus 1, the number of people is n, divided by n. And then you subtract 2 times the summation as i goes from 1 to n of basically n plus 1 minus i times the person's income, we'll run this in a minute, divided by the number of people times the sum of their total income. So if there's five people, in order to take a very simple example where there's not much income inequality, three people make two units of income, two people make three units of income. And that's a pretty equal income, distribu income distribution. And the Gini index, the, the larger the Gini index, the more inequality. Now, if we look at this formula, how would more inequality basically uh, come up with, cause you to have a larger Gini index, okay, if there's more inequality. Well, basically, what's this numerator? Okay, if i equals 1, you get 5 plus 1 minus 1, 5 times the lowest person's income. And then i equals 2, you get 4 times the second lowest person's income. And you get 1 times the highest person, the highest income, okay? And so you're giving more weight to the people with less income, okay? So basically, the people with less, okay, so if the people with less income have very little money, very little money, then you're going to be basically subtracting off a small number here, and that'll make the Gini index bigger. So, like if the again the, the person who makes the least income gets a weight of five, the second least income a weight of four, etc. So, if those people don't have much income, you'll be subtracting off a smaller number, which makes the Gini index bigger. Now, here are some Gini indexes for countries around the world. So let's see if inequality has gone up from the mid-1990s to the late 2000s. So you can average the Gini indexes in these countries. These are developed countries. And you'd see there hasn't been as much change as people have said. But in the late 2000s, which of these countries has the most inequality? Well, Mexico. That probably wouldn't surprise you. And the least inequality, New Zealand, sorry, uh, Norway and Sweden. And those are the countries that have, I think, the biggest income safety net. U.S. is slightly higher on Gini inequality than the average of these countries here. But how could I compute the Gini index here? Okay, for five people, so I will go from one to five, n is the number of people five, and so we got to compute each part of this formula. So what's n plus one over n? Well, that will be that plus 1 divided by that. Okay, and that's 1.2. Now, we should talk about order of operations here. This is quite important. So there's, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. You'll see what this means in a minute. It's like Holmes is the Great Lakes and Roy G. Biv is the colors of the spectrum. So this means parentheses are represent, or you do stuff within parentheses first. Then you do exponentials raising to powers. And then multiplication. And then division. See the first letter of each letter here. And then addition and then subtraction. That's the hierarchy of operations. So it doesn't hurt to put extra parentheses in here. So I put the the parentheses in there because if I had done equals R2 plus 1 divided by this, see that's not going to work because what happens with that formula, it does the 1 over 5 first and that's 1 fifth, okay, because it does division before it does addition. And so that would be 5 plus 5.2 and that's wrong. So I had to put that stuff in parentheses there to make it give the right answer. Okay. 
So, uh, sorry, Q12. So I'm using a formula text function in Excel to show my formula. So I think that's helpful. Okay, now I want n times the summation of the x sub i. Okay, well that's simple because that's going to be the denominator. So that's five people times the sum of the x sub i's. That's this. And I believe that's 60. Now the numerator is a little bit tricky. And we'll introduce a new function to make this simpler. So the numerator is going to be when i equals 1, remember, okay, you want n plus 1 minus i to weight the lowest person's income. Here's n. Now you need to dollar sign that. Plus 1, and you copy down, minus i. Okay, so that's going to be 5 through 1. See, the lowest person's income is going to get the highest, the lowest income gets the highest weight. So that's 10, that's 18, that's 24, that's 33, and then you've got to multiply it by 2. So it's, what is it? It's Q4 times R4 plus Q5 times R5 plus Q6 times R6 plus Q7 times R7 plus Q8 times R8. And basically, that's a pain in the neck. There's got to be a function for that. If I want to multiply everything in one column times another column, or everything in one row times another row, there is a great function for that, the sum product function, which we use a lot later in the course when we talk about solving. Okay, so what I would do is take two times sum product. We'll take a row times a row or a column times a column. So I take this column times this column. Okay, and that comes out to be 66. Okay, now I'm ready to get the Gini index here. Okay, so the Gini index would be the m plus 1 over n. That's this. Oops. Equals point to this. Okay. Minus the numerator. Divided by the denominator. And that's point 0.1. And which is much lower inequality than what these other countries that we've listed had, because this is a pretty equal economy. We'll show an example of how if you make the incomes more unequal, the Gini index can go through the loop there. Okay, now suppose I had forgotten the parentheses, what would have happened? So if I'd taken the numerator, sorry, n plus 1 over n, minus, and I just simply took, I want the numerator divided by the denominator. See, that works the same. Okay, I really didn't need the parentheses because the order of operations means it does the division first, so it does the Q14 over Q13. But I like to put those parentheses in. I think that makes me more sure that Excel will be doing what I want. Okay, now let's just experiment with changing the incomes in this next worksheet. Okay, so basically, It's got to be one thing here. I'd use the range name. So we've got the 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 now. Okay. And then basically, see, I had named this cell. We can take R2 plus 1 divided by R. Range names will be something that we talk about later on. And then we would take R2 times the sum of the x's. Okay, so if I have one person making all the money, I get a Gini index of 0.8. Okay, now suppose I go 1, 1, and then I've got 40, 100, and 1,000. The Gini index is 0.73. So you, if everybody has the same amount of income, what would be the Gini index? It would be zero, okay, which is a nice property to have. So I think we've covered a lot of ground here, how we can use Excel to compute the Gini index, which economists use to measure income inequality. We've also talked about order of operations, which is very important. Okay, so thanks for watching, and, and there's a free course, a free 21-day course from Dr. Winston, um, and all of these videos are coming from one of three books. So first, this one, which you can see here at the top of the screen, um, Microsoft's book, which has 
355 reviews, uh, and then it's, let's see, 4.6 stars. Um, it's coming from this book as well, his marketing analytics book, which is down here, and you can sort of see 4.5, or his newest book, his analytics stories book, which is here. And with that one, you can see it's four point something, or maybe even five. I don't think it's five. Yeah, 4.8. And so, yeah, anyways, in the description, there's a free 21-day course from Dr. Winston, um, or you can go to excelwithwayne.com slash free, and it'll be there. But again, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, just uh, please let us know. Thanks.